What's up everybody, I hope you're all doing well and having a good day. Welcome to another video. So, since the last video, I have now finished Endwalker. And the reason it's taken so long to get this video out is because I am an emotional wreck. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to process anything from that last area. I don't know, I've been struggling to go back and watch the recordings. Uh, I, I don't know how I'm going to put words together to talk about what happened or how to, how to really do this video because just listening to flow in in my in my house right now <laughs> kind of it's kind of hard so uh let's 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 get through this together final fantasy 14 endwalker part four there's, there's there's a lot to talk about here pretty much level 87 msq to the end so obviously spoilers from 87 right to the end uh let's get straight into it so the last video ended in elpis uh msq level 86 so you'd met hermes you'd met Emma and Typhlodius. And then coming into 87, you meet the last big character here, familiar woman, Vanat. Or Hydlin, as some people will know her. Or Crystal Mummy, well, as well, everyone else knows her. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they did her really, really well in Elpis. I think no matter where the game goes from here over, you know, the next 10 years, where we, where, no matter what happens, I think this will always be one of the best zones in the game. The to be able to sit with these three incredible characters and just talk like they're your friends and just do stuff with them and quest with them it it's phenomenal i was just ever since the end of shadowbringers i was itching for more time with emma and you know you hadn't even really met hythlodius so this scene to talk about the end of the world and to plan and to just to have time with them it I, I didn't realize how special it would be and now it's over <laughs> after finishing the game it's even hard to watch this back this is the best area i find myself just sat here when i'm editing or when i'm just chatting to people i'm just sat in elpis chatting because it, it's just so many good memories and i never want to leave and then you get you have to prove yourself to vanat i think vanat's character was incredible this fight was hard but uh the, the character is so well voiced so well written um incredible this this fight this scene where you're where you're on the bridge talking to her on the uh, on the castle walls this uh, it was amazing to spend time with Heidelin Vanat was oh it just felt so special uh, and it feels even you, I didn't even appreciate how special it felt at the time but going back and watching this after the ending oh man but aside from the sadness the real story of Elpis was all about Hermes, his nihilism, his his existential crisis, and his 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 adventure to find the meaning of life and the point of living. So he sends his creation out to the other planets to find out what the answer is. But all she finds is misery, despair, and sadness. And because of the dynamis, and because she's uh, she's like an empath, so whatever anyone else is feeling, she feels it. My understanding is that because there's so many versions of her, and because there's so many planets that have been destroyed, all she all she feels is sadness amplified and despair amplified, which overloads her and just makes her realize the only way, the only true ending for anyone is is the end. There's no point in being happy because it all ends. And this was this was so dark. Up to this point, I had no idea what the end was. But as soon as you see Meteon, just just the the dark side of Meteon, you kind of knew. I knew there'd be some interstellar, some some space. I thought she'd found like a big alien on another planet, or some some other race that were destroying worlds, or you know, some like Avengers-style Thanos on another planet, or some world eater. I thought that's what she'd found. But I would never have expected the world ending problem was her itself. Uh, uh, it's so well done. But despite the red flags, the issues and the problems that could come from this, Hermes needs the answer to his question. So he takes uh, he takes Meteon in a last ditch attempt to, to find the answer and protect her, which takes you to the first dungeon. And everyone said you need to do this first dungeon as a trust. And I don't really do trust dungeons, but... The ability to do this dungeon with these characters. Oh, Square Enix, how can you give us everything we want and more? How can you give us everything? Everything that we've ever wanted? <laughs> You've done it. You keep you keep delivering to run a dungeon with Venet, Hyplodius, and Emma. I didn't even know I wanted this, but 
I guess I did because I love it. <laughs> It's if you've not ran so this dungeon weird. as a trust, definitely give it a try. It feels incredible. The dungeon itself definitely isn't my favourite of the expansion, like mechanically the fights and the aesthetic. Definitely not my favourite because there's some absolute bangers of dungeons in this expansion. Um, but to run this one with trusts makes it so special and so memorable that it's not about the dungeon. For me, it's about running it with these characters and having an adventure, one last adventure with these characters. I just never would have imagined that we'd just be here fighting things together in all in our robes. Place. Just like like friends. Like an adventuring party of friends, but they're not. They're, they're 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 the ancients. They're the oh, they're the unsundered it Ah man. I'll never forget this dungeon. I'm curious if this hit as hard with you guys or if you didn't enjoy it. Let me know in the comments if you if you if you felt the same here. Was this as special as you or was it I don't know, but because this one, this one really, really, really left an impact on me. And then the ending was just as memorable. We finally get to see Emo Meteon. We get to see the Meteon turned from all the all the other versions of herself on the other planets have corrupted her and and turned her to this path of she's seen so much and felt so much that that she's decided that the only way is to end everything. And then maybe a controversial opinion. I'll always be honest in these videos, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say something you might not like here. I thought this was the best part of the entire game uh, of the uh, expiring expansion. I thought this was the highlight and the peak of everything. I thought it was better than beating Zodiac. It was better than the ending. It was better than everything else. It was just perfect. It was flawless. The storytelling was amazing. The acting was 10 out of 10. The characters were just so good that. The twists and turns were like five steps ahead of me every time. And I just loved how they set up the who keeps the memories. So you and you and Heidelin kept your memories, which is how she was able to set everything up in the future. And why people like Emma were still going against you, because he had his memory wiped. It was oh. And then this line. This line got me. It was so good. Do not squander it. The legacy I leave you. And then speaking of like the most hyped and excited I've been in the entire expansion, this is probably one of the saddest moments. If this would have gone on for like 30 seconds more, I think I'd have just been bawling my eyes out. This was this was one of the hardest scenes since like Mattia and the and the child. This was this was really rough. You you realize that the reason Vanat's eyes were open and the reason that she didn't trust in in Zodiac and sacrificing everyone to try to save the world is because she'd seen a glimpse of the future in us. And she knew that the only way to survive was to to live and experience and not hide from these negative emotions, but embrace them and find light in the darkness to overcome the the negativity. And it, I don't know why, but it hits so hard. I found this so real. And I think, I don't know if I'm wrong here, but this felt like a, this felt like a scene where she was walking with you through all your experiences in the game and no matter where you were even no matter what she was going through and how much it was reducing her power and how much it was weakening her she was there with you she was your she was your light she was your she oh, she never lost faith in you and never never stopped believing and never stopped helping you despite what she had to go through and how hard it was on her she was always your light and she was always there they could have they could have ended the expansion here and just said this is why it all happened she this is how Heidelin came to be and that's the end they could have ended this story right here ended the expansion right here and it would have been a 10 out of 10 for me and not only does it make Endwalker an incredible expansion it makes Shadowbringers better in hindsight I've gone back and watched some of my recordings from Shadowbringers like the Emmett scenes and it you you see little bits and you see them differently now and then we have to go back to our own world i i guess <laughs> i never wanted to but yeah you have to go back to your own world you've got blasphemy to fight you've got the end of the world coming and it, i always think it's great to fight with the with the uh scions and like other characters i know some people don't like this some people think it's it's too confusing and it's not fun but personally i love it i, I think it's great and to, to play as like sage alfie as well felt awesome um i guess if you've never healed before 
then playing as a healer might be weird or if you've got no interest in it it might not be enjoyable so i totally get it but for me these are some of my best moments i absolutely love it when they let you play as someone else especially like characters that you like i 10 out of 10 these scenes just like the end of shadowbringers Endwalker? Wait, wait, and Shadowbringers, the very end, um, where you got to play as everyone in the big fights. I thought it was great. 10 out of 10. Leave big, big, me. big fan. I'd love to know in the comments, what, what do you think about these scenes? Like, are you a fan of playing as the other characters, or do you not Do you not like it? Is it... And, and why? How can... Like, if you don't like it, what, what are the reasons? Is it something I've mentioned, or is it something else? Maybe it's too hard? I don't know. Maybe it's too easy? I don't know. Let me know. I'd love to know. Because for me, I don't see any downsides. So, yeah. Let me know. Let me know, please. Please let me know. And then you return to old Charlian and it's and it's it's time to set up the next part of the game. You offer to help build the spaceship and then they let you see the mother, the mother crystal, and they let you go and pursue Meteon. That's kind of the agreement you have. So you get to work with one of the coolest little Lalafels in the game. <laughs> this guy's really funny. I like this guy, big fan. And then I'm gonna keep this fairly brief. Every expansion has its like downtime and it's it's lull it's lull period or stuff that doesn't maybe connect with you and doesn't mean it's bad it just means that you know I, I, you've got to have you've got to have low points you've got to have you, you can't just be hyping yourself up for the whole game you've got to have slow paced areas and it doesn't make them bad but that was that was what labyrinth dust was for me so the return of the labyrinth dust i'm going to keep quite short because i found it kind of kind of long kind of slow Especially this quest, we had to go find the eight students. Uh, this was this was long. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly skim over this this return to Labyrinthos area. And when you, when it's slow paced and uh, not much is going on, let's throw in one of the saddest scenes in the game, shall we? <laughs> yeah, they really they really they really come at you with the uh, Moonbrayers Moonbrayers parents, don't they? Uh, yeah, this was. How many people did this break? Did this did this get anyone? I said it in the last uh, the last part three episode, but uh, Yuri Andre quickly became one of the best scions. He's his storytelling throughout Shadowbringers and Endwalker is is top class, and they just humanized him, made him so much more relatable. And uh, stuff like this, wow! He just doesn't feel like some. He doesn't feel like the robotic, hard to understand guy that you met in ARR. He feels like a real human friend now, and I love it. I think they've done such a good job. This scene was. This scene was a rough one. One of many. Okay, and then with with the ether, the 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 ether burner, the the ship complete, it was time to head to the Atioscope. And if you'd have told me what was at the end of this dungeon, I would have never gone. I think I would have just just stopped playing here. Okay, level eighty nine MSQ. Let's just stop. Let's not play anymore, because it, it gets real, doesn't it? That I think this is where the feels train starts. If you were, if you weren't broken before this dungeon, uh, you, the, 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 there's no coming back. It just gets worse and. This was this was a rough one. This, it, I think I've said that a lot, but it just doesn't stop, does it, from here? One thing that I love about this one that I'm sure a lot of people will is the little things that happen to the players that are getting... The, the, the characters that are helping you, so the little staff appeared. At first, I thought the staff was Louis Soin, and then I, well, I think someone told me that it's actually Papelmo, because it's his staff, it's his... It's his... Uh, it's him helping you throughout the dungeon, like his his spirit, which which is which is so cool. It's such a cool idea. I really like how they bring back all the characters after you build the ship to help you. So they bring people from like ARR, Heavensward, Shadowbringers, and Stormblood. They bring everyone together to help you build the ship. And then when you get in the dungeon, they even bring back the characters that have died to help you. And it's just such a good way to remember like special characters. Really good idea very very smart move and definitely definitely catches you at the catches your feelings a little doesn't it and some of the scenes and some of the bosses here which is so so cool so good I, this this is definitely one of the better dungeons i think this is one of my favorite dungeons in in endwalker i thought it was really impressive not just the not just the story they were telling but just the look of it the mechanics the bosses just really 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 good i might do it again on trust just to see what extra little bits of lore are here because i did this with with uh with with players so yeah i'm I'm really intrigued where what this is like with with the scions in because i don't know how they're going to react to the different characters the ending i thought was kind of strange um of all the people they could bring back to chat to you they bring back Eamon and asahi <laughs> okay um i thought that was strange i was expecting different people to turn up here um but i mean it's it's pretty cool they i i guess it i guess it does close the book on 
on the characters and it it gets it gives you a bit of closure i guess and then as cool as uh as cool as zodiac was this was hands down the best trial in endwalker this was this was just something else mechanically lore wise storytelling music emotion everything was here it was it was 10 out of 10 this was a, this was an incredible trial incredible and mechanically it was great mechanically it was it was really 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 good the the the, the different phases the how they bring you up and do the crystals and then take you back down the big waves of light that take you back to like shadow bringers everything was everything was amazing it was it was really 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 good i can't follow it i really do want to do it on extreme like i want to clear it on extreme as well but one day soon hopefully <laughs> but the feel strain doesn't stop there it uh it passes straight through because uh yeah it it it, it, it just hits you again have some more have some more sadness <laughs> Now I'm not sure if uh, I, I I struggled a little bit here. I was, I was struggling to follow it a tiny bit, so I'm not sure if I got everything. But I think it was the the, the crystal behind her. She was saving ether, or I think, and you she can help you use that to power the ship. I think, and then she gives you the power to she gives you like does she give you creation magic, or she gives you the power to summon people with your crystal? I I, I was a bit. I was a bit, uh, I was a bit uncertain. I thought it was a little unclear uh, on the first way through. I've watched the video again now, and I get it a little bit more. But yeah, give the form to formless. I wasn't sure if that was creation magic. It felt like it, especially with the ending. But I wasn't, I wasn't 100. percent Let me know in the comments if I've missed something there. If it's something completely different, or it's some other thing that they that they've hinted at somewhere else that I've, that I've missed. And then it was time to get the 89 gear, which was epic the the 89 gear uh, i think this was a great idea they did it in shadowbringers i thought it was very cool like the guy in the tempest that was interesting but i, I liked how they did it here as well where it's just like tattoos start her own little thing and you get to go and buy it and I, I thought it was really cool the the i was playing as a summoner so this the summoner gear i was i was crazy impressed with i thought it was great i thought it was really 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 good looking i tried to check out some of the others some were better than others <laughs> um but i was i was really impressed with the summoner gear i thought I thought this really did look the part. It, it felt very, it felt very final, and it felt very epic, and it looked like the sort of thing I was, I was pretty happy to go into the last zone with. Um, yeah, I mean, classic summoner dong, but <laughs> yeah, I like it. I, I didn't wear the hat. I, I had that hidden eventually, but um, yeah, I thought this was a really cool gear set. I'd love to know in the comments what your job was, and if you, if you were happy with your gear set, if if you if you like your look. Um, some definitely look better than others. The Dragoon and Paladin look amazing. But yeah, some looked a bit weaker. But yeah, let me know. Let me know. Were you happy with yours and, and what class what, what class was you? And then you got like a special little moment with, with each of the characters. So you got three little events, which was which was really, really nice. It was kinda it felt like you were going towards the end. It felt like they were foreshadowing a death. It felt like they were leading up to something horrible. But it was a special moment nonetheless. My favourite was definitely Estinian and Estinian and uh Alphanor, I thought this was great. It was really, really good. They had like this brother, Besides, older brother kind of relationship ever since Heaven's Ward, and I think they've done it. They've done it really good. They didn't just this here. I think they. This was this was a really nice moment. And then you had the cheesiest anime. <laughs> I don't know why they did this. The primals powering the ship. Um, it was so cheesy and so unnecessary, but hey, it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. <laughs> Uh, uh yeah what did you think of this i thought it was pretty funny uh if you don't take it too seriously bye thancred bye bye what a hero what a hero i'm guessing this is because he didn't have ether. he doesn't have ether power is that why he could stand up against her i can't remember but yeah pretty pretty interesting pretty pretty interesting start and with thancred's sacrifice it lets you he, he, he allows you to see and breathe on the planet, I think. I think that was how they told it. But I, from here on out is where I struggle. This, I'm going to struggle to talk about the rest because it still feels so raw. It still feels so hard to talk about. It it was just so sad. And it just went from, from worse to worse. And the music changed as each sacrifice happened. And it just got sadder and sadder. And it gets harder and harder to watch. Um... Even here, as you're finding these these unbirthed eggs, it it just it's just so depressing, and it just doesn't get any better. There's no there's no humorous pickup anywhere. It just keeps getting like 
I guess they were trying to show despair and and sadness and you you had to be the the light you had to find the light in the darkness I guess that was what they were trying to do maybe but I struggled I struggled to stay positive here I was just getting more and more sad and then they tied every every sacrifice to to <clears throat> their their how they it connected to the character so for obviously for Astinian it was about the dragons and how the dragons had no fight left and he connected with that so he had to stand against that feeling it was like they had to put their emotions against the, the negative emotions and he stood against the dragons and that's how his sacrifice came to be and i'm gonna be honest i was fine here i'll tell you where i broke i was fine here i thought this was this is pretty cool it didn't break me down it was pretty it was pretty sad but pretty interesting and then you had yustola and yurianje who can relate to the ear in the, the their sacrificing for the pursuit of knowledge but at what cost and i thought the ear were really interesting how they gave up their bodies to live forever and to 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 learn about the future but then once they realized the future and they realize that without a body there is it's not worth living and they realize the end of the world and everything everything about the ear was just so fascinating and it, it just really does hit you you start to feel like hermes not not being able to you know wanting wanting an answer to the meaning of life <laughs> and then even though Yustola tells you not to summon her back you it, it became kind of clear that because it's happening to so many scions they're all going to start doing it and they are going to come back but it didn't make it any easier and then graha can relate to the robots in that he's also sacrificed himself to join with part of machinery you know the tower and he's very close to allegan tech and i think his his sacrifice is pretty interesting as well the the cyborgs i wanted a lot more story about those there's the optional dungeon which was really cool but i wanted so much more time with these these robot uh these robot species but i was fine until here this this completely ruined me broke me i couldn't i couldn't get through this I, this oh i'd post my my you know and i normally post my ending reactions uh but I can't even look at it. I can't even look at this this recording of... I played this on Twitch live and I can't even go look at it. it just watching this back is getting me all... Um, this is the hardest scene in the whole game. Whole game. This is... Um, okay. 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 Right. Skipping ahead. Um, yeah, let's, let's move on. Right. Then you have no friends no allies you're all alone and you have to walk up this staircase through all the all the memories of um all the different people and this was it, it just it just never got easier from here right to the end did it 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 was incredible the storytelling was amazing the, the i mean just looking around at the area was amazing but i just i just never bounced back here i was just I was just sad from here to the end. It just never, I never picked back up. I've composed myself now. Let's talk about the ending. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. The ending. Right. So you had to find a way to give her hope. You had to give Meteon hope and get her out of the despair. And the way to do that was to summon, summon the, the old friends with the power that Heidelin gave you in the, in Azim's crystal. This was this was cool. I wasn't expecting this at all. Was anybody else? I, I I was not expecting this in the slightest. I thought we were gonna summon like I don't know some people from Eorzea or something. I was not expecting this, or maybe even bring back some of the scions. But I was not expecting this at all. And then I'm not sure if I I, I, I followed this properly, but they used their creation magic to bring the flowers, and then the flowers prove that despair isn't isn't still dominant and that there's hope because that's why the flowers are white and that's why we can summon back the scions i didn't really get it i i, I thought it was a bit of a stretch i didn't really get it I, it seemed a bit too easy i don't know maybe maybe it's, it's, is there some key key plot some key lore I, I missed there let me know uh but yeah we got we got the scions back which i think everybody was expecting i don't i think it was pretty clear they were coming back it felt like they were as soon as they started taking like every one by one by one i felt like they were coming back 
and then Emmett starts uh, dropping some clues on the next expansions, I think. He starts uh, talking about all the undiscovered places in Eorzea that we haven't been to that we need to adventure in. Ten years of ten years of content they've got planned, right? Maybe this is a, a little, a little uh, teaser, maybe, potentially. And then the final dungeon of the game was a 10 out of 10 straight banger. This was incredible. One of the best dungeons in the entire game in terms of aesthetics. Like, it was on par with Amarok. It was, you know, the it wasn't just the end of the world. It was the end of all the worlds. All these different worlds that have Once come to be time, destroyed. I still, like I say, I think views. maybe I'm just not. I mean, it was like 4 a.m. when I finished this. Maybe I, maybe I wasn't following it too well. But I couldn't work out whether this was the actual people and it was the you were actually at the end of their world or the if this was just a vision or like a memory of it being created by meteon same as same as like amarok was just a memory but if this was just a memory or if this was the actual <sighs> help me out <laughs> i i can't i wasn't sure i really really wasn't sure either way bloody amazing it's such a such a cool dungeon and yeah at 90 we got the we got the big primal summons as well as a summoner, which was which feels really fun. Summoning like giant life-size Garuda. I've now I've now reduced those to medium size, uh, small size because they take up half the screen. But yeah, the yeah summoner feels good. And then it was cool how they take you through the different the different worlds. So you start in the first one, then you go to like this robot one, and then you end up in the the weird like grassy one. It was it was the naturey one. It was really really cool. Uh, such a good idea to smash all three together and you know make it this this like tell three stories in one i'm really looking forward to getting this in the expert roulette because i think it's going to take a while before this gets boring i i think there's a lot to see here a lot of things to to, to enjoy about this dungeon apparently you can also get the bird you get the bird as a minion drop which i really want you know the little blue meteon bird i definitely want that but i guess everybody does <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be very competitive to get that i think and then all of the meteons together forming this giant monster slapping planets down on the on the ground at the scions just you've got people like Estinian who feels like a god and she's just throwing planets at him like this was just phenomenal this really felt like the end of the world the end of the game the end of the series it was so 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 good so good and hey i'll always i'll always be honest <laughs> you know what's coming i'll always be honest this was this was perfect. This was this was I can't fault it. It felt epic. It felt amazing. There's one there's one thing that was that was I wasn't into. With with, with all your friends gone, you're alone against her. This just felt cheap. It just it just felt real cheap. You've 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 done all this to get to the end of the world. You've you've had to build a spaceship. You've had to you've had to get the, the help of every single person in Eorzea. The entire world has come together to get you here. And then Xenos just appears on Shinryu and he's got some I weird story about how he got here that wasn't shown anywhere and it oh it was I thought it was really cheap and tacky I didn't like this uh I didn't I didn't like this part the actual ending fight was amazing but how he got here and just throwing him in because you know we've got to use Xenos here and we've got to, we want the final fight I thought he was going to sneak aboard the ship somehow or he was going to take the body of someone on the ship and that's how he was going to get to the end with you. I thought he was going to be at the end, but I thought he was going to sneak on the ship. To do this? No, not for me. I don't, I don't like this talk. Anyway, moving on. The final days. The final day trial. This was this was probably one of the easier trials of the three. The three, right? Yeah, this was probably the easier of the three, I thought. Um, but it was epic. It was epic, epic, epic. It felt like an ending. It felt like a finale. It felt... It, it, you know, it felt like the end of Shadowbringers. It felt like the end of the end of an expansion. It it lived up to kind of what it needed to. I thought it was, I thought it was amazing. I thought it was so 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 good. You have like the uh, like the Charlian upbeated music going, which was which was amazing. You've got like the planets that are that are blowing up and they're they're slowing and starting time. Everything was just. Everything just felt epic. It really was the ending I think we all deserved. I think it was... I mean, I can't say a bad thing about it. I can't say a bad thing about this raid. Phenomenal. 10 out of 10. And then with with uh, Meteon, calm down, she flew away. And you had one thing left to do. And this was a very, very beautiful and emotional ending. I think they did a great job. They did, they did, they did it. They did a good job. But there was one thing left to do. 
our friend. And although I've although I've said like I didn't really like how he got here, I thought that was really bad. I thought it was I thought it was a really really bad way to do it. Um, however, I don't want this to be a negative video. This fight was amazing. His storytelling all throughout Endwalker with Fan Daniel and then post Fan Daniel even, I thought was really good. They've actually made him a really good character, and I think he actually brings out a lot of good parts and interesting parts of our character. And this fight, this ending did him justice. I, I think it was worth bringing him through the whole story to have him here at the end. This was this was an incredible ending. And after this, I genuinely think Xenos is a great character. I just wish they'd have put him in the story more and given you more reason for bringing him here. And I don't know, maybe you could have that maybe you would have like made friends and he'd agreed to fight with you and come on your ship or maybe he'd have taken a hostage or taken a body or done something to be a part of the journey or done something on the planet with you to, to, to be a part of the journey before the end but to just just slide him in at the last minute just so he's here was weird but anyway this this ending was this ending was wild i i really 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 enjoyed this and the solo fight was was so good it, to come from like the solo fights in stormblood which were, i thought were a bit lackluster it was just so high intense and high energy here you just give your everything against him and it was oh man it was so 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 good i thought they took a risk here and i think it paid off i think ah uh, well, i'm curious what you think about like the reaper side do you think the reaper side had enough like you only saw the reaper in him like the red eyes and the the transformation for like what like a minute i would have liked more of that in the story maybe um but it was nice to see it at the end. I thought it was great. Maybe they were just keeping it as a little secret for the ending. As someone who's not played a Reaper, it was it was pretty cool to see. And the the best part, like the the best part about this entire ending was right here. Emotionally destroyed. No energy. Nothing left to give. The game has just taken everything. And you just fall. Never have I understood those. And you just lie here and it's exactly how i was feeling inside you've just got nothing left you've just given your last bit of hype your last bit of energy and you just crash down he's got everything he ever wanted you've won you've saved the world but you've got nothing left and neither's he and i just thought this was so so poetic i i think this was i i don't think they could have done a better ending here this if they'd have done some super hype high energy ending i think it would have been it would have taken away from how it really felt because this for me is exactly how I felt. I felt completely defeated. Despite winning, I felt defeated. And they did such a good job. Uh, amazing. So, so, so good. I'm really curious how you all felt about the ending with uh, with Xenos, with Meteon. What, what were your thoughts and feelings? Overall, I told you like one small issue I had, but overall I thought it was amazing. I thought despite that small flaw it, that I found, I still thought it was amazing. But yeah, I, we're out of the spoiler territory now in the fact that you're watching an ending video. So go go hard in the comments. Just let me know. I, I really want to read like how other people feel about the ending. Was you was you hyped and happy? Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Were you sad? Were you crying? Was there stuff you didn't like? Was stuff you wanted to see that never happened? Or did they fulfill everything you wanted? I, I really, really, really want to see like did it did it do the finale justice for me it did for me i'm satisfied more than satisfied everything i ever wanted was in this expansion i'd love to know how you felt i'm probably going to wrap the video up here we, it's, it's already really really long it's like 35 minutes I, this this ideally would have been two videos but seeing as i already finished i it felt weird to edit two levels of content and then pretend to predict so i just wanted to be honest and just keep it a full video and just unload thoughts feelings uh and recap everything really from the last three levels i hope it's not been too long I, if you stuck around till the end hi, hi. <laughs> how you doing <laughs> um yeah, i really appreciate it or if you just skip right to the end to see what's here hello welcome <laughs> um yeah thanks for thanks for watching this series thanks for watching this video endwalker has been an incredible experience and it's kind of been the icing on the cake of an amazing journey right from ARR over the last six months, seven months, maybe. Um, and I suppose I'll, I'll quickly talk about where to go from here because most of the content on this channel has been going through the game. 
and that's over now. The story's over. But where it seems like the story's over, I feel like there's now so much more time to focus on other things. Because for the last six months, seven months, I've been playing the story every, I don't know, like three or four times a week and then making videos on it one or two times a week. So it, pretty much every single time I've been in the game, I've been trying to get out more story, post it, play it, and that's over. So it does free up a lot of time. So I can cover a lot more things that, are, that I'm interested in in Final Fantasy. So hopefully you like those. I've got another series planned that I'm going to be working on soon. There's obviously a ton of stuff coming out in the game. We're going to have loads of Endwalker stuff. There's a raid coming soon. I'm going to be doing the Extreme Trials. I'll post some 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 videos of that. There's uh, obviously there's there's loads of stuff going in the in the patches as well. So I'm going to cover everything as it comes out. But in between that, I do have some a fun series planned and then some smaller videos that will go alongside. So if you if you've been here, consider subscribing because hopefully you're going to like where we go from here. But I appreciate you all for coming along. I appreciate if you made it to the end. I appreciate every one of you that's followed this channel, that's been here on the streams, on the YouTube, leaving comments, liking the videos. It, it wouldn't be possible without you all. And I'm excited for where we go from here. This Endwalker is not the end. Endwalker is the end of this saga and the beginning of the next one. And it's not just for the game, it's, it's for the channel. So I'm excited. Other than that, thank you all so much. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.